attach in the sediment. And I don't know, have we seen, are there any corals that attach to other corals? No, but I think we've seen them attached to sponges. I feel like, yeah, maybe we have. One of our viewers is asking if we've seen any coral at this depth that would not be expected here. And I I can say that we're hearing from the science chat sometimes um, someone will write in and say that they've never seen whatever it is, fish or sponge or coral at a certain depth, and they're asking for a collection of that specimen. Go ahead and keep coming up there, Jake. Go ahead and keep coming up there. Yeah, there's not... Sure as many observations at, at the deeper depths that we've been going to. So uh, a lot of the observations that we make will extend the known range for, for certain species. Yeah, I remember going out into the remote Pacific a couple of years back and a lot of the things we were seeing were range extensions, not only depth wise, but just, uh, you know, a latitude as well. Because it's, you know, the dives out there are, are less frequent. So anytime you see something there. It's, it's likely that, you know, hasn't been observed in that place before. Yeah, and even though we're making a transect up this seamount, and we're seeing a lot of stuff, we're kind of tracing a very thin line up the seamount. So, we're, you know, we're seeing much less than 1% of its surface. So there's plenty of chance that if you were somewhere else on the seamount, you'd see something. I know it's deceptive because we spent so much time down here and I feel like we've covered a lot, but in the grand scheme of it, it's hardly anything. Yeah, just whatever you can see. Whatever you can see with the flashlight. Mm. Yeah. A viewer's asking, is there a website where all of the scientific research images used in scientific research from our expeditions is posted? Some of that is in our gallery section of our website, if you look there. From what I understand, no, there isn't a central location for that. If you're looking for d data, is it? Uh, publications. Publications, yeah. You were asking more specifically about pictures, so oh. like photos, pictures. or including microscopic images. Oh, interesting. There are certainly uh, archives of, of data, but video and pictures is, is a type of data we collect that's actually a real challenge to archive and serve to the public. But uh, if you go to, I think it's called oceanexplorer.gov, that's the uh, NOAA o archive for uh, dives they've made with the, on the Okeanos Explorer and uh, the ncei.gov is also a place you can go to search for video and, and imagery. But uh, there's a bathymetry on ncei as well. Some of the but yeah, the, some of the bathymetry can be searched uh, or located through ncei. Even if it's at another archive, you can sometimes find it through there. R two R has all of our, all of our crew's archive, all that data, pic photos, everything. 
the letter R, the number two, and the letter R, rolling deck to repository. Actually, I don't know if it's a number two. Mm -hmm. I think it is a number yeah. two. But probably if you're just looking for highlight photos, then you can look at the cruise, any cruise highlight photos that are on a, on the uh, Nautilus Life website. It's a large sponge piece there. Bridge nav. Uh, 100 meters, 225. Thank you. 225, Raj. 225. Uh, you'll probably still have another bit of swing, but yeah. eventually 225. Can we look at that? Uh, coral to the bottom left. Bottom left. The one that's it's kind of hard to see. It blends in. Big one. This one here? Yeah. No, the... Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, the big one. one. Raj, Raj. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Which one? Again? Where the lasers are? That one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Type of black coral. Do you know what kind it is? Mm -mm. Maybe you guys a little closer here. There's a little better light on it. All right, Dave, go ahead and start your push there as I sit down. I don't think I've seen a black girl that big. And come a little wider, please, Dave. I don't see it in the guidebook back here. Not that one? I don't know. All right, a little wide, please. Dave, you want to do a partial over here real quick? All right, go away, please. Don't get caught up now. Adam, a viewer would like to know if you've ever found parts of seamounts that look like they've collapsed, since some of the vertical walls seem pretty precarious. Yeah, I think some of those vertical walls uh, definitely have 
collapse, which is why they're so vertical. It's a little hard to tell here because of the iron manganese coating, but uh, definitely we see some evidence for cross sections of pillows where uh, the wall kind of yeah. cuts right through them. like to say thanks to our viewers tuning in from all over the world. Keep sending your questions to the chat. Oh, we have some Swedish breakfast information. Oh, right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, All it. right. So our viewer says, I'm pretty boring. I vary in per periodically from home-baked bread to regular purchased at the store bread. I only use butter on the sandwich without toppings. Is that Pretty typical? I think that? I don't know if that's typical. That's, that's that particular that's that person. <laughs> Hey man, homemade buttered you bread. You. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all <laughs> Especially homemade. Excellent breakfast. We had a question about the specimens, how well they do when we bring them up to the deck. And how the sponges do? Yeah, any oh. kind of specimens we're collecting. Oh, uh, sponges and corals do well. Um, as long as we preserve them pretty quick. Um, some of the corals uh, start to go necrotic really, really quick within minutes because of the temperature change. Um, but for the most part, they make it to the surface okay. Um, and do you, put, do you put them are, right in the fridge right away or try to get them on an ice bath or something? Yeah, they stay in the salt water that yeah. is in the in the boxes, right, and go into yeah. to the fridge? Yeah, when we pull them off the vehicle, we keep them in the seawater. Um, the bio boxes are sealed, so they come up pretty cold, but the slurp jars are not. Um, so the slurp jars get prioritized when we're processing. And so, yeah, we'll grab them, put them in little containers full of seawater, and then put them right in the fridge. Oh, okay. um, and then the ones that, are, that degrade the quickest get prioritized first. Um, described, imaged, and then put in um, typically just 95% ethanol. Do you still do the RNA SNPs? Um, sometimes. Yeah. We did so uh, more last expedition, but not this time. Yeah, back back in the day, remember we had so many requests. It would be a SNP for RNA later. We'd have some in ethanol, some in formaldehyde formalin and then we'd have to do like triplicate depending on the crew's sp speaking okay. specifically about the Galapagos. Yeah the last expedition um, we processed with dry formalin and ethanol samples for some species but this yeah. one has largely just been dry for sponges um, and ethanol th for everything else. Yeah, it seems to be really cruise dependent. Sometimes we'll do we'll have a cruise with a lot of push cores in uh, methane seep territory and various ways of processing it. So it'll be hours and hours in the lab and other times a lot of rocks and sometimes you don't want to do anything with them on the on board, you know. Just take them on land and process them there.
Oh, look at those perched on that big rock. Oh, yeah. So we get into a an area where things are flattening out a bit. Looks looks like it. Um, uh, in general, the bathy is like this. It'll be a little less slope. Um, Jake, you want to push on in there a little? I don't know if there'll be little local walls like we've been seeing, but. Thanks. All right, full wide, please. Thanks. One of our viewers asked how the sea pig fared. Um, some of them did really well, others not so good. <laughs> <laughs> The other night's not so much, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am. The world doesn't need to. Hardwired in you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So a question about the lasers, they are for measuring objects that we can see and they are 10 centimeters apart. We should put that in big text right under <laughs> the video because that's the most commonly asked question. It, it is, is a very good question. Yeah. It should be like a telestrator comment. You just like poke the screen <laughs> and it pops up. <laughs> Video's back. Great, thanks Dave. Thanks, Actually, Dave. we could have like a Chiron Dave, has there ever been suggestion of that? Like a, the that bar is. across the bottom where the text kind of goes across? Uh, uh, like a scrolly text? Yeah. Nice. A oh. Chiron. Wow. I haven't heard anybody talk about a Chiron in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, uh, there's. we've got an overlay system uh, that we haven't implemented yet. Um, we need a lot of yeah. need that, uh, data tie-in. Uh, from ROV data and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's mostly for pilot usage and that kind of stuff. We try and keep the video uh, that we're recording and sending back uh, out to uh, the world fairly clean. Because once you burn something into the video, it's there forever. Yeah. That looks very interesting. That's a what is like that? A sea star that is a predation event. Go ahead and there, please, Dave. Yeah. Coral. Right. Look at my like tail. A corn cob. <laughs> he has some associates on oh, this. Wow. Oh, wow. I wonder if they're parasites it's or so what great. they are. I think they're the Fashion kind of, statements. Kind of gross looking parasites. <laughs> yeah. Or are this, they whole, this whole scene is yeah. disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> we walked up on it like, hey, look, let's look at that sea star. <laughs> looks fat. And what are <laughs> those green things? Oh. There's some kind of worm. So yeah. there's multiple la levels of predation happening here. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Can I come a little wide there, please, Dave? Can get closer? All right, pull wide there, please. <laughs> it looks like he has some band-aids on him, maybe. It's a nice way to put it. So uh, then talking about displaying uh, data and, and that kind of stuff, we do uh, encode uh, using the closed caption uh, process uh, in video, the, that data segment that goes along with the video. Uh, we're recording all the time uh, dive number, date, positional data, uh, heading, 
uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's locked into the video, but it's not uh, burned into the video. But uh, a player can play it, and, uh, and you can call it up, turn it on or off it as needed. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't... Yeah. How you look, much... Can you look over here and see my monitor? Yeah, I've seen the closed captioning before we do that on ONC. They tend to, to yeah. play that upstairs in the mess for people Right, ON, ONC also likes to send that back uh, to their folks at shore uh, via the satellite stream. Mm. Uh, and it's the only time that we do it, uh, which that's client-specific. That's what they want to see coming back. Um, How much more room is there for additional information um, alongside the video? Like, could you put all the sensor data there? You could. Uh, to a certain extent, I mean, there's a, a practical limitation of, I think it's six lines of data. We've got it at three lines scrolling, uh, and we could probably do four easily. Are we going up this ridge to the west now, southwest? Yeah. Our plan? Okay. Yeah. Yep, going southwest. Um, I'll zoom out on high pack here a bit. We're flying southwest. Flying southwest. Cease and desist. Or we're going to get a letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And you're in Group D. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> group Z? I know. I was like, a Group Double Z. I didn't realize that <laughs> Group Gamma Omega exists. <laughs> A viewer is asking if the camera on Hercules is looking straight down or forward and down on channel one. It's looking forward and down. And whenever we go up to walls, he just looks straight up forward. Yeah, there's a slope in front of us, so we're kind of traveling up a slope. We have a follow-up question about Megan's giant high spot. It is a plushy pillow. It's very cute. Oh. <laughs> Just the right size for hugging. Did she make it? No. Oh, she, that's a surprise. I think she said she got it in Japan, or she ordered it from Japan. I think it's actually filled with tiny isopods. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a disturbing thought. For a massaging it? effect when they crawl around inside. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why am I so itchy? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> interesting guys <laughs> I have a picture of of her with it <laughs> right. uh, we had a little help from shore on those bright yellow worms polynoidae polynoidae on the starfish yeah, and I guess the identification picture online shows them on uh, that same kind of sea star. Wow. Are they just associates, or do they have, like, a predatory relationship? You know, I try and stay out of their business. <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably safe. I think they are parasitic. <laughs> oh some bad, bad dudes. Some bathy pathies on this wall. Deep feature. Yeah. We're kind of right at the yeah. prominence of it. Yeah. But not nearly as much uh, colonization. No. Uh, also, the current's not as crazy here either. Maybe that has a factor into it. Yeah, it seems like there's, there's a bit of colonization in, in that there's small colonies, but they haven't quite grown to the big fans able to get something but perhaps not enough to be to grow it'd be nice if we had a a good way to measure current <laughs> i mean it's tough like what happened on the doll <laughs> yeah that's why i was chuckling <laughs> yeah, <it's all laughs> yeah you could get a um adcp yeah something but you'd have to you'd have to then take uh, out the vehicle motion right exactly Oh yeah. my god, we're just finishing each other's so thoughts. Do you have to like, thoughts, what, yeah. shoot, shoot it up <laughs> or something? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Subtract your Doppler. Yeah, <coughs> you can, it can do it. It's it. a solvable problem. Yeah. Well, on surfaces where your Doppler is working properly. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Probably get a good idea. Probably be easier to put an elevator down if you were ever doing a dive with the elevator and collect samples and stuff and just have an ADCP on that. Yeah, unfortunately, I'd like to see how it changes as we move around. Oh, yeah. So you can't put two ADCPs on, one for Herc and to speed and then one for current? Yeah, you could. I wonder if you could mount, yeah, mount it upwards. Might be better on Argus. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Adam, a viewer would like to know if that crust is rough, like sandpaper. What does it feel like? Uh, no, uh, you know it. It's there's not one feel to it, but there's some parts that are really smooth, and some parts that feel a bit grainy. Yeah. Uh, and it, I think it kind of depends on. actually don't even know what it depends on. It doesn't on. <laughs> feel rough, though. Even the grainy stuff still feels pr fairly smooth, yeah. soft. Yeah. I don't know. It's quite it satisfying. Feels smooth, smoothed over. And, you know, you can you can kind of scratch it off with a, with a knife. It's not uh, super hard. Have you guys started doing some of that already? Yeah, Coralie Rodriguez, who's a graduate student at University of Rhode Island, uh, has been using um, a ceramic knife to scrape off the very uppermost layer that she'll take back to the lab and uh, measure the trace element chemistry of. A ceramic knife? Yeah, because just to avoid contamination with uh, other metals, because she's trying to measure metals. Oh, oh interesting. Is the whole knife ceramic, or is it a ceramic coated? The whole knife is ceramic. Wow. Like, oh. not the handle, but yeah. the knife part. One thing that's kind of cool is when this dive is over and the vehicles are back on deck, you can continue watching the view of what's going on in the wet lab, so you can kind of see some of that sample prep with our wet lab cam. It's quite a prominence here that we were climbing yeah. up. Oh, we're back to the cool trails of barnacles. Oh, that's kind of a neat formation here. Yeah. Little bathtub. You wanna do a partial zoom here, please, Dave? Yeah. It's great. That'd be an awesome place to sit <laughs> if this was Still. not underwater. Just like chill out. Yeah, it has practically your armrest there. <laughs> Very cool. Full light, please. Sponge in there or something. Viewers notice that noticing that some of the organisms kind of share a similar orientation and wonders if that is attributable to the ocean currents. I would, I would bet my money on it. I would bet Jess's money on it. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 this is only my money here. <laughs> Get your own bartering system. Oh, well, oh there's another there. purple crinoid. Yeah. Oh, 
And one of our viewers says they wish they could get some audio from the wet lab sometimes. And I will tell you that I just got to spend uh, some time helping out with uh, sample prep. It's very loud in there. <laughs> It, yeah, Corley's got a fan running the whole time. So. You would not be able to hear the audio anyway. That's so pretty. You know, I kind of wonder if the... You want a partial zoom here, Dave, please? The currents, you know, that obviously the animals are more successful when they're in the currents, but then they spawn, and then it carries their larvae along with the currents. And I wonder if bit. that eventually kind of concentrates a lot of colonization at the top of the seamount. Yeah, like the, there would be more spawning from a more success, a, a larger creature. Yeah, just that the that they don't immediately settle, or maybe they do, but if they get carried along a bit, they end up further up the seamount than than their I don't know parent or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Is it possible to get a zoom on those white spherical things? Uh, top of the sponge. Up the top of the sponge. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Dave, you want to push in pretty far, and then I'll just drive by it. Wow, that's so nice. Thanks, Dave. Are they gastropods? I don't know. Yeah, they look like little snails. I don't know what those are. Yeah. This looks like there's some like inside the sponge too. Great, thanks Dave. Gonna come full wide please? Get back out in front of Argus now. Yeah. The viewer is asking if we have found any human made objects, and yes, we have. We found one yellow flip flop, a beer can, a bottle. What else? There's one more thing I'm missing. Uh, something that looked like a alternator. <laughs> <laughs> but. Nothing on this dive. Yeah, yeah, nothing so far. Found a tire, right? Oh, last, yeah. Last tire. watch was that? I'm going to toss this out. Maybe somebody in the science chat will pick it up if we don't know. Um, is there a technical name for the lines of the barnacles? Like a train of barnacles? Assemblage of barnacles. Ooh, <laughs> good question. <laughs> What's a group of barnacles called? Sounds like a setup for a joke. <laughs> is this a joke or a is no? <laughs> I'm just you know like a lot of animals have <laughs> yeah. crazy names for groups right, of them. Right. A barn of barnacles. <laughs> a barn of barnacles. Yeah. The viewer is asking if there's any thermal activity in this region at all. Adam. Uh. No, not not driven by uh, the heat of 
magma that's all long gone. Uh, but it is possible that sometimes seamounts like this can be a little ventilation point for big aquifer uh, kind of running through the oceanic crust. Uh, but we haven't seen any evidence of any fluid flow um, you know, out of the seafloor on this expedition so far. One of our viewers says that on an earlier part of the dive, they saw what might have been an oil can. Not on our watch, but maybe an earlier watch. Not on our watch. Not yeah. on our watch. <laughs> no, sir. We have a suggestion for a flock of barnacles. A flock? <laughs> I think a flock, I think, is something that moves fast. A glue of barnacles. A, glue. a swag of barnacles. A swag. City. <laughs> City of barnacles. Oh. A drip. I've learned some <laughs> terms from my preteen daughter. Uh oh. I think drip is one of them. I can't remember. What is it? Sorry. Yeah, what is that referring to? I think that. What she uses it? Uh, I, th I think it drip? means like you got. Is it drip? Yeah. Like, it's like swag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, some fancy stuff. Huh. Oh. Interesting. It, and takes, they it takes like 14. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just said yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they are kind of like adornments on the rock, so. Okay. Maybe we, maybe we go. Drip of barnacles. I'm a, drip I'm of in, barnacles. I'm Wait, so a colony of barnacles, we're calling a drip of barnacles? Or yeah. it's the fact that they. A collection exist. of. Those barnacles got drip. You know, if you don't understand, you know, yeah, just whatever. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. <laughs> All right, Adam, don't make me come back there. <laughs> don't make me turn this ROV around. I will yeah. turn this ROV around. Just drop me off and drive away, please. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hope you have a drippy day. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the, the total dad thing to do is to use those words incorrectly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they don't even the college kids don't like it. <laughs> Can we zoom on that yellow coral right there? Yeah. Ooh. It's cringy. <laughs> sure thing. Getting Little. us back onto the science that we're here for. Yeah. Is this a black coral? <sighs> Uh, yeah. Looks yeah. like it. We haven't seen one like this. Seem like a black skeleton, then? Yeah. Alright, Dave, you got any more tighter zoom on that guy? Could it be Storopathies? I don't think so. Or is this a golden skeleton? Is this a Chrysogorgia? Oh. A golden Chrysogorgia? Yeah, it might be. Might not be black. Um, we're looking, we're looking. Osco, save us. <laughs> kind of looks like there's bits of bare skeleton that are gold. Which would Got be nothing. Got nothing back here. Would be Chrys I think that's a, Chrysog a golden coral. Chrysogorgia? A canthagorgid, maybe, is what a Sako says. Canthagorgid, I think we'll go with that. And then there's the white polyps on there as well. Are, are, yeah. they, are they two different organisms? Is um, there just, are there it's unclear. Yeah, can't tell. We'll fix that in post. Dave, can you get us the right name and have me saying it? Have <laughs> <laughs> me saying it authoritatively. Oh, I'd please, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, with the right Photoshop filter, we can make it all the right color. Too. Asako thinks it's octocoral on there. 
Let's go two six zero for a bit. Roger. Bridge now. <laughs> One hundred meters bearing two six zero. Thank you. How much layback is that there any? Like fifty meters? Yeah, I think there's a bit of layback. It, it'll catch up. Raj. Do a yep. partial this guy, too. Renny, where are we in a ship move? Um, I just We just finished a ship move. I just called one in, adjusting our a bearing a little bit more uh, westward as we kind of... All right, let's hang out at the end of the next one. I think it's time to collect a rock sure it seems pretty f flat so i don't think we'll change the depth too much yeah oh really okay i'm looking for another 50 meters of all right full wide there please dave uh, we might make that we'll see depends on the way the steppiness of it what was the next depth that we want to uh, sample from 2050 20 ish That's also when Jake is old enough to drink. <laughs> <laughs> He's a zygote. <laughs> when Jake starts flying, he's going to just sit on the ground, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Start taking out the rocks. <laughs> Don't have my license yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt he'll take it out on me on the cribbage field. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the cribbage, the cribbage field. We play full contact. <laughs> full. <laughs> I prefer flag cribbage. <laughs> <laughs> A little less roughness. <laughs> have some suggestions from viewers. One one viewer says the correct noun for barnacles collectively is incrustation. Ooh. Okay. But that they go that's on rational. to say that's very boring and they prefer a bombardment. A bombardment. bombardment. <laughs> oh, interesting. Another person says a constellation because they look like stars in the sky. Oh, that's oh, good. That's nice. nice. And one suggests they should just be called a hurt. Oh, yeah, why if you had a personal encounter with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest where beaches are made up of rocks and barnacles. <laughs> and uh, it was not always fun to walk on the beach. So are you voting that they be called hurt then? Ooh, look at that big fish. I like the constellation. Oh, yeah. I like the constellations too. Science chat suggests maybe a band, a band of barnacles. Band. Ooh, just not bad. Would they be considered bandits then if they hurt your feet? <laughs> Good, Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. Very cool. We can see you. Coordinate. <laughs> coordinate. It's a uh, coordinate. Mark that down. Can we take a look at that sponge, <laughs> the taller one, when I you're think done? Yeah, let's look at that one. I think it could be a. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. It's a nice sponge. That's oh, pretty. I'm just looking at that one on the. Euplectelidae, I think. Euplectelidae? Wow. Very this, cool. This local ridge is kind of east west. Just curious, so we're trying to Full wide, please. follow it a bit by going. What did I say? Two sixty. Two six zero. Almost west. Yeah. Two six zero. Yeah. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Jake. Yeah. Look at this large sponge. Woof. Wow. 
crusting sponge. Oh my wow. goodness. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Wonder if it's giving the coral space or if the corals are sending something out that, that says you must give me space. <laughs> Usually by text back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and push on in the bit, please. It's a whole sea of precious corals underneath us too. Oh yeah, you can see it in the bubble can. Oh. It just looks like foam. I gotta imagine that the encrusting corals and the stock corals have a lot of arguments about what the best way to do it <laughs> is. Yeah. All right, full weight there, please. It's kind of a good, a good uh, scheme to not have to grow a skeleton. You just use someone else's. Yeah. It's pretty twisted, actually, to say out loud. <laughs> Glad oh. we we're talking about coral. <laughs> you want to see that sponge back there? No, because I thought it was a fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just move on. From but now yeah. it's a sponge. <laughs> Yeah. It, was, it was close, it was close. Maybe the chordate <laughs> level is, is where you should be at. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just call everything there's close. Wait, how about there? How about there's a fish right here, Adam? <coughs> what you That's, for, it right? was a premonition. It was a yeah. precognated uh, um, circle I drew. Very similar form. I'm going to go animal. <laughs> 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 Until you guys are like, uh, that's a rock. Yeah. <laughs> please go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Thank you. Oh, hey. <laughs> Dude, totally <laughs> crazy. Oh, right. Everybody, keep it together. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> she just sneaks up. <laughs> Wrestling shoes. <laughs> and we have a question from a viewer about how long... Does coral live? How fast? How slow does it grow? And also, does it communicate with other corals? It's a lot of questions. That's a good question <laughs> about the communication stuff. And I have no idea. Um, how long do they live? Uh, I think the oldest one's been dating dated to 4,000 years. So quite long. Um, and from what I understand, the size does correlate pretty well with age. And the corals at this depth are growing much more slowly than the ones in shallow yep. areas, right? Yeah, no, that's right. ROV pilots and or navigator, can you take a question? Sure. Yeah. Our viewer from Australia would like to know what has been your most difficult or challenging dive to date? Um, some of the some of the dives in Ocean Networks Canada are quite technically complex. They're a lot of fun though, and uh, for me, I would say <coughs> doing that kind of technical work at the en Endeavour vent field. So anytime you're operating around hydrothermal vents, there's obviously you don't want to accidentally get anything too hot. For example, the tether. You don't want that to be in a plume of hot water and there are chimneys all around you so you're kind of like playing pinball a little mm -hmm. bit um so we often use a longer tether for those so the so argus is able to actually like be above a lot of the chimneys while hercules is below navigating it a little maze but sometimes chimneys are that tall and you're kind of amongst it and then you can't really pass argus over them because there's heave starts to kind of like bounce in a smoking chimney and then the smoke smoky water it's not actual smoke but the chemically laden mineral laden water is uh it's hard to see it's, uh, you know, 
black smoke visibility. So that's always challenging, but it's still fun. What about you guys? Uh, <coughs> I would say, well, definitely last year with the in the Channel Islands with the um, all the fishing gear. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that was we were great. always like on the edge of our seats whenever we saw anything that looked like a line. Yeah. And there was lots of siphonophores that looked like lines. <laughs> so there, there certainly were. Yeah, I'd actually say that was my answer too. Is Channel Islands with the uh, with all the ghost gear. Yeah. Uh, along those lines, sometimes shipwrecks have fishing gear caught in them, so it can be this really kind of treacherous scene when you get down there. You don't know what you're gonna find. It, a lot of lines caught up in it. And yeah. Don't want the tether to get ta tangled in it. But you do want to get close enough to see the shipwreck, so it's kind of balance. Like Argus is finally coming to a, a wall that's more ahead than to the side. Viewer is asking if the fish move so slowly at this depth to conserve energy. And it's a great question. Some of the fish just move out of view, so we don't even have, you know, a complete way to answer that question. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> One of our viewers asks if the team has ever gets the giggles and can't stop. <laughs> I think that happened All already the time. Yeah. on the second dive. <laughs> I can stop anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't giggle. Uh, like Asako thinks that the Acantha Gorgid we saw at 2,080 meters is one of the deepest recorded. Oh. Was that the gold one? Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Acantha Gorgia? Is that Acantha Gorgid? A or I? A. A Cantha Gorget. That's exciting. That's awesome. Yeah, we were, we were just talking about that earlier, right? Like, Yeah, range extension. Get, get, up. get down here, and you're going to see something never seen before. I mean, it didn't look like it was doing so well. But it was there. Well, I don't know. It's pretty large. So it, one, it once was doing well. Yeah, it had some... Uh, branches that looked a little ragged, but there was a lot that looked good on it. 
Rennie, what's the approximate depth we'll be at with the end of the ship move? Um, I'd say okay. probably pretty similar to where we're at, actually. Maybe okay. 10 or, depends on these walls, but yeah, I'd say maybe 10 or 20 meters higher. Is that within your depth range, or you want to head up a little higher than that? I think we'll keep going a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that the diversity and density continues, though, so that we can pair that with the good Niskin free DNA. Oh, great oh. idea. I see, like a rock Niskin, and then yeah. the Niskin will also be used for eDNA. Yeah, we generally will not do eDNA for the Niskins that are taken in sparse mono. Is it just that there's not a lot of value to it or for the process? Or? Um, it's just that we have limited tubes for our eDNA. Uh -huh. um, so, and we do want background eDNA samples, but we have quite a bit of that. So we prefer high density, high diversity. Makes sense. Do you just take notes on that back there or decide in the lab later or what? Uh, yeah, I note it back here um, so that we know how many eDNA bags to prepare when heart comes up. But it might also be interesting to do one where there's less uh, stuff around. I might get the same yeah. answer. I think we're still like kind of trying to figure out what eDNA you mean really like a tells base, us. Yeah, baseline. But it, you know, it might be that that the d DNA persists long enough that yeah it gets mixed. Well, on the majority, I think of our dives thus far, that's been the case. Mm, I don't okay. think we've got many in this high dive diversity, high density area. It looks like it's going away. We have a viewer who's asking about the mission of this dive, and say it's the same for all of the dives in this expedition. Have a good time. <laughs> and also collect a series of rocks up the seamount and document the abundance and diversity of benthic organisms. We have viewers from 12 different countries tuning in right now. That's pretty awesome. Nice. What's the list? All right. Here we go. Most The country with the most viewers currently is the U.S., and then we have Australia, the U.K., Japan, Canada, South Africa, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Finland, Denmark, Germany, and Belgium. So if we need more recipe ideas, it looks like we have... Some good sources. Yeah, I was in um, Brussels, Belgium. I was at like one of the main squares there. I was having Belgian waffle with Belgian chocolate on it and drinking a Belgian beer. And I was like, you know, Belgium's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuck in Bruges because of a train strike, and I was totally fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that uh, trinide moving along there. Oh, yeah. I love to watch them swim. Yeah, imagine the first time someone saw that. Oh. <laughs> Is that the same one we collected? Yeah. yeah. 